This conference will now be recorded. Okay. Assalamualaikum and good morning all. Sorry, just now I forgot to on my mic. So we meet again in our morning talk. Um, today we have Mr. Mr. Lam Patlun from Rodden Schwartz with his topic mobile network benchmarking and troubleshooting with network performance scoring. And as usual, before we proceed, appreciate all to Mute the mic and uh, off the camera for better performance. So, Mr. Lam, you ready? Hi, yes. Thank you. Okay, I pass it to you. Thank you. Sure, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, uh, thank you very much for uh, inviting me to speak uh, to you guys on this topic. Okay, so uh, today my topic is uh, mobile network benchmarking and troubleshooting with MPS. So I will actually be going through uh, what is exactly uh, MPS, okay? So before I do that, uh, maybe let me just uh, have an introduction for, to, for myself, okay? So that you know uh, who I am. Okay, so I am uh, actually based in uh, Singapore, okay? Um, the regional headquarters for Roda and Shorts, which is in Singapore. Okay, so I'm the, uh, APEC operations manager. So we, we uh, do uh, network testing all over uh, the Asia Pacific. Okay, then, uh, yeah, so previously I was working with uh, ST Electronics and uh, dealing with a lot of wireless and networking projects. Okay. Uh, okay, sorry, I have a jet flying pass. I hope it's not too loud. Okay, yeah, so I, I actually graduated uh, quite some years ago uh, from NTU in uh, Singapore, okay? And uh, personally, I love uh, exploring new technology and how to use technology in our daily lives, okay? Good. So uh, that's a bit on myself. Uh, so now let me just go on to the agenda. Okay, so... Uh, what we have for today is basically first I will explain uh, what is uh, MPS. Okay, then I'll uh, talk about how to use MPS for benchmarking between different networks. Okay, so followed by how to use MPS for ne network troubleshooting uh, in this case. Okay, and then finally, of course, uh, how to use smart analytics, which is our our broader and short uh, uh, software post processing tool to. Uh, uh, to look at these MPS results. Okay, so this screenshot here actually shows us how uh, MPS is like uh, in general as an overview. So you can see the MPS is actually a, a score with a total of 1000 points. Okay, and with different operators, we can see different scores for them. Okay, they can be split into data and voice and so on, which I will be explaining uh, into more details uh, in this further few slides. Okay, so first we are entering what is MPS? So the full name of MPS is Network Performance Scoring, okay? So Network Performance Scoring is actually a unified approach to quantify the network performance using a unified uh, scoring system. Meaning to say this is like, uh, like taking an exam, uh, but for the operators to see how, how much they're getting in their scores, okay? Like I mentioned, it is one out of 1,000 points how many points are they getting out of 1,000 points? And then we can actually do benchmarking between operators to see who is a better operator and in what areas is better. Okay, so in this uh, network performance score, okay, you can see that this, this is the triangle uh, ranging from level one, which is to evaluate the performance for all service classes. Okay, so what it means is that uh, we have a different uh, service, like for example, data, which we split into uh, uh, live streaming, 
website browsing and so on okay and then when we aggregate these uh, data uh, classes together and combine them with different uh, phone uh, call classes for example then we can put different rates to it and then we aggregate them together in uh, different regions so these regions can be uh, user defined meaning to say you can define the different cities or different uh, uh, roads or rural areas or having different weightages for the scores and so on and then combining everything to become a country score or uh, one single score for the whole country okay so this is what the whole uh, gist is for this uh, network performance score okay so let's uh, go down into the level one which is uh, we are talking about uh, the the actual performance classes that we are looking at or we in other words we call uh, the kpis that we are looking at okay so for this case, you can see that um, we are actually okay, only looking at only one part of the score of the whole region, okay? And uh, for this we, uh, score, we are looking at uh, separated into telephony and data, okay? And in data itself, it is also separated into data transfer, video streaming, social media, and web browsing, okay? So in this particular example, we are looking at web browsing score. Okay, so how, how good it is to browse a website on a particular network uh, operator's uh, network. And uh, from this web browsing score, it is actually further divided into different KPIs. Okay, so in this case, it is one for the success rate, whether it is successful. Then of course, there is the duration for the web browsing and then a further one which is if the duration is more than 15 seconds it will be a separate score for them so why is there a separate duration more than 15 seconds okay i will be going through that in the next slide okay so for this you can see that all these uh times and the success rate and so on they're actually mapped onto a kpi technical kpi point scale okay so this point scale actually give each individual of these kpis one particular score which can be aggregated together to form an overall score for web browsing. Okay, so this is just one example for web browsing. So similarly for social media, it will have a different uh, KPIs to combine and same for stream, video streaming and data transfer and so on. So for telephony, of course, that will be for call setups, for example, uh, call drop rates and so on. So there will be many KPIs to combine into a, a single overall category in uh, which you can see over here. Okay, so from this point, you can see that, uh, like I mentioned, okay, that each individual KPI is actually used in uh, the different categories uh, for the uh, score that uh, we are looking at. Okay, so call setup time in seconds, for example, speech quality, if we are talking about calls uh, in, uh, in MOS, so there's a MOS score of uh, between one to five. To see how good the voice quality is okay then of course there is a browsing success ratio whether it's successful how many percent it is then there is of course the the thing that are most important for mo most people here is a uh, download rates how fast are we downloading a certain website or certain files that we are looking at okay so all these uh, different technical kpis are mapped into a common scale which is over here, you can see that there's a common skill with different points, okay? And then of course, we are taking into consideration of human perception, okay? What does it mean by that, okay? I will be going to that in this next slide, okay? So what does it mean? Okay, so uh, uh, imagine if you are uh, opening up a website, okay, which is a uh, five megabytes uh, big uh, website. Let's say you're going to, to look for uh, uh, some uh, some details on uh, uh, COVID-19, for example, let's say the, the government website. Okay. And then if you're taking 25 seconds to load that particular website in order for you to look at the news, definitely that is a no-go for you. It is taking way too long. Okay. But let's say if it is taking five seconds, Okay, uh, sorry that I, I have a lot of noise in the background, okay, because um, I'm living very near to an uh, airport, so sometimes these uh, jets come flying across, so sorry about that. Yeah, so uh, stop me, please stop me if, if uh, you, you can't really hear my voice out of uh, when the jets fly past. Uh -oh. 
relevant. So what I'll go on to say uh, for this part here, you can see that uh, if let's say uh, the website is loading in one seconds instead of five seconds, definitely this is something that is very good to the to us. Okay, so meaning to say almost instantaneously when we press uh, the website, it will load immediately. But what if the website loads in 0 0.25 seconds instead of one second? Okay, so in this case, it doesn't really matter to us anymore because as humans, the reaction time already takes about let's say one second. So when you press it and the website to load in one second, or if it loads in 0 0.25 seconds, it doesn't really matter to us anymore. The the human perception is is the same in uh, similar in, in this way. Okay, so what we're trying to say here is the negative experience counts more than the positive. So meaning to say negative experience is meaning to say that we are getting uh, using 25 seconds to load a website compared to uh, the positive experience, which is using uh, one second to load a website. Okay, So it is important to rectify these 25 seconds to push it to one second instead of from one second pushing it to 0 0.25 seconds. So this is uh, uh, it doesn't really make much difference if you push it from one second to 0 0.25 seconds. So there's no uh, no real uh, gain in that uh, for doing this. Okay, so that is when we take into this uh, human perception into consideration into this uh, so-called uh, uh, network performance score. Okay, for each of the different KPIs. So you can see that the curve is actually not a straight line. Okay, but it is actually a, a something like a half a sine curve. Okay, so you can see that it is uh, very different according to what is our perception here. Okay, so uh, yep, so uh, sorry, yep, so this is the one that says you need to improve when you have a very poor perception, but uh, for good perception, you, there's no gain to it, so there's no need to improve further. Okay, so using this as an example, okay, for browsing duration to download a website, okay, a good limit is uh, about one second. Uh, this is uh, using uh, some uh, developed in, in DTSI, okay, this standard. So they have actually taken into account of uh, different human perception and, and, and so on, okay. So one second is considered as a good limit, but a bad limit is anything more than six seconds, okay. So as long as the website loads in more than six seconds, it will be an immediate zero for them. Okay, so instead of get, uh, the points uh, being uh, so called distributed evenly, so it is actually distributed evenly only between one second to six seconds, as you can see from here. One second is here, six seconds is here. So uh, the points are actually uh, separated from. Uh, only from one second to six seconds, but anything less than one second, it will still be considered as a good limit. So uh, the points will be the same, even if you are getting 0 0.1 seconds compared to one second to load the web page. Okay. So I hope this gives you an understanding of how this uh, score is uh, uh, comes about with different KPIs. Okay. So of course, what I've mentioned so far is only one single KPI, which is for web browsing. Okay. So now, uh, another example is uh, for something which is uh, slightly different, which is for video streaming, okay? So in video streaming, we are not only looking at uh, the time to load that website. Uh, in this case, uh, these five factors contribute to, to the uh, score for the video streaming category, okay? So first, of course, there is the video streaming success ratio, whether it succeed in streaming that video, okay? Then we have the quality using the VMOS score, so a scale of one to five, meaning to say you get a, a good, very good score if you, you get a very high quality video with uh, less jitters, uh, no, no uh, lost frames and so on. So those are very good high quality video. Okay, that will give you as a, about four to five uh, more score. But let's say if you keep uh, getting uh, less uh, jitters or, or lost frames, okay, then you have a very poor MOS score in this case. Okay, then of course, if you are getting a very, very good uh, peak MOS, okay, for the top 10 percentile of the MOS score, 
we, we are given extra points for that as well. So meaning you say your network is so good that I can actually uh, even stream uh, 4K videos or maybe even 8K videos in the future, okay? So con instead of just a normal uh, HD video or even a 720p uh, video, okay? So these are some, some factors that, that can be uh, considered as well, okay? And then of course, how long does it take? to uh, load the video, okay? So if it takes uh, more than 10 seconds in this case, it is uh, a very poor uh, loading for this video. So they will give them a, a very poor score for that. So if the video uh, uh, access time is less than 10 seconds, meaning you say maybe it loads in uh, one second or two seconds, then it will be given a much better score for that particular KPI over here, okay? So this is, just uh, example again for uh, different things. So that was uh, for video streaming. So you have also, of course, for data rate, and, and then you can see uh, the different success ratio here, throughput, and all the different percentile of throughput and so on, okay? Which I will not go into details because all these are, uh, are very similar to what the, the KPIs is all about, okay? So with all these KPIs, okay, uh, what we're looking at is not more than just uh, looking at the average value, okay? Because uh, in the past, we are always looking at what is the, let's say the average data rate, for example. But we always neglect the fact that there are very, certain places whereby there are very, very poor um, data rates, okay? Or whereby they are actually, the network performs very good in certain uh, high density areas, for example, okay? so. In network performance score, we do not only look at the average, but we also consider the 10th and 90th percentiles. 10th percentile meaning the worst areas, okay, the uh, the uh, last, the poorest 10% of what the uh, users are experiencing. And then of course the 90th percentile is the best 10% of the network where the users are experiencing, okay. So if I just go back one slide, you can see here, all, for most of these uh, uh, KPIs, we have this 10th percentile, 90th percentile. So this is what I mean, uh, sorry, uh, by by 10th percentile and 9th, 90th percentile, okay? So, uh, yeah, so uh, when you are looking at the uh, 10th percentile, meaning the worst area for the network, the weight is always the highest in network performance scoring uh, system, okay? So it means that, uh, we are actually giving it a, a higher percentage of what the score uh, will be when it is aggregated compared to uh, the 10th percentile, or the 90th percentile, sorry. So meaning to say, although we are given, uh, we have a very good performance uh, network uh, that is uh, fantastic and excellent in, in those 10% areas, um, these actually uh, have a lower weightage than the 10th percentile, which is the wor worst uh, performing areas. Okay, so all these uh, scores are weighted differently, and uh, these weightages are actually fixed by the ETRSI standards. Okay, so this uh, cannot be uh, changed uh, according to what the user wants, these weightages for, for the different KPIs. I mean, okay, so you can see that it is. Testing is really more than just maximum download speed, but it is covering all the different things, uh, the percentile that we're looking at. And of course, in this case, we need to cover all the different applications that uh, the users are using uh, today, okay? So the four most, uh, the four main um, so-called categories that is uh, considered in the data performance for this score is this uh, data transfer, web browsing, social media posts and uh, video streaming, of course, okay? So each of these will, uh, can be uh, tested with a different app, of course. So uh, for example, data transfer, you can actually use uh, the, uh, the FTP download, for example, but uh, for, uh, for browsing, you can actually use uh, any browser. You can be using uh, Chrome today, uh, maybe some other places you, you, you're using Apple Safari browser, for example. They may have different performance, but um, it, it is actually giving us an overall view of what the browsing uh, category actually performs for the network. Okay, so same for social media, okay. Uh, how to, uh, you may be using Facebook today, 
or it may be uh, Instagram in some other places. Uh, like for example, uh, in, in China, they can't use uh, Facebook or, or Instagram. They will definitely use their own, uh, they call it Weibo or something, Weibo or something like that, okay? So, so it, each country actually will have a different kinds of uh, app for this, but in the gist of it, they are using the same uh, category of uh, application. Okay, the so same for video. You may be using YouTube here, or in the US, they may be more interested in Netflix, for example, and, and so on. So there are many other different uh, things that you can actually, uh, applications that you can look at. So this uh, actually addressing the different technical aspects for each of these categories, okay? So data transfer is many uh, download and uh, upload of the data. So you see what is the delivery speed that they can provide, okay? Browsing is uh, to test the download for multiple uh, uh, servers, okay, to see how it performs. And of course, social media posts, to post a video or post a, 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 a chat, uh, it is really to, to see how the upload is performing for this cellular data network, okay. Then of course, for live video streaming, it is to test the continuous uh, transport of data without any uh, loss in data packets from that uh, particular network. Okay, so, uh, yeah, so as I mentioned, uh, it is important to cover all these four technical aspects and it doesn't matter which application you use. But of course, in order to do a good benchmarking in the same country, you need to use the same application in the same country. But uh, if you're doing across different countries, then you can actually use uh, different applications depending on the country that is, um, most used applications for that category, of course. Okay, so that is uh, what it is uh, overview for uh, level one uh, MPS, uh, the Network Performance Score, which is to com to see what kind of KPIs and how to read these different KPIs together into different categories to form a score, okay, for each category. So now let's go to level two, which is to add all these uh, categories together to form an overall score for each region, okay? So uh, let's go back to here, okay? So you can see that uh, these different KPIs, okay, are actually uh, able to be combined together into a score for a data transfer. And in this case, it is for a video streaming. So when these KPIs form the score for video streaming and data transfer, they are actually, uh, again, aggregated according to the weightage given, uh, which is a standard set by ETSI, okay? For, uh, and then combine all this with social media and web browsing into a data score, okay? So this data score is also given a weightage, okay? So currently the weightage for data is uh, 60%, okay? While for calls, telephony, it is for 40%, okay? So of course, for calls, it will have a, a different uh, KPIs to, to combine together to, to form this uh, uh, score for the telephony, okay? So when this 40% of the uh, telephony uh, score is added to 60% of the data score, okay, that will form 100% of the total score for that particular area of interest, okay? So these are uh, all fixed together to form, uh, uh, form the score for that area. And then, of course, you can separate this into uh, different uh, areas. So let's say if uh, in, in Malaysia, of course, you can separate into uh, roads and cities, or you, it may be in, even in the forests, in the mountains, you can set different categories here, okay? And these categories, you can set the weightage, okay? So for this case, you can see all these are added together to form the highway score. So you can see when people are driving, what are the experiences they are getting on the car when, uh, if they make a call or if they're uh, doing some data transfer, okay? So uh, that will give an overall score for the highway, okay? And then, uh, yeah, so as I have already mentioned, uh, this uh, uh, weighted combination of all the different KPIs and categories, okay? So lastly, for the top layer, okay, this is really to, with and aggregate all the different regions together to form a countrywide score, okay? And this is when the actual benchmarking occurs with uh, MPS, okay? So with that, okay, what it means is that uh, from the previous slide, you can see that uh, all the score is combined into a 
high weight score, okay? And then similarly, uh, the same uh, different, uh, the same different KPIs will be uh, uh, combined together and aggregated into a city-wide score, okay? And then this score can be added together with using different weightage that can be set by uh, the users. So we need to say, I can define my own uh, uh, weightage now. So let's say I think that highway is not so important to me, okay? It may be just 0.1% uh, of the time people are using the highway. But in the city, maybe 90% uh, of the time are using it in the city. So I can set it to 0.1% of the score uh, to be uh, for the highway, okay? And 0.9% of the score I mean, ninety percent of the score, sorry, uh, is for the city, uh, city-wide area. Okay, or you can even set it uh, to further details. For example, city, which city are we looking at? Okay, uh, in Malaysia's case, probably you can set uh, Kuala Lumpur as one of the major city, Malacca, Penang, or Ipoh, or Johor Bahru, or whatever. Or, or you can set it to a state score, for example, the whole of Kedah, whole of uh, Johor, for example. So all these can be set as a different weightage uh, according to your definition. So let's say you think uh, Kuala Lumpur is the, the most important. You want to set it to, uh, let's say, zero, uh, uh, okay, 30 percent of all the score. Then maybe only 10 percent for Penang, 10 percent for Malacca, 10 percent for Ipoh, or, or whatever else. Okay. So all these can be uh, defined by yourself. And, uh, and then when you add all of these together, you can form the overall network score, okay? So this overall network score, you can actually use to compare different network providers to see how they perform and uh, how they actually uh, perform in different areas as well. Because now you, you have a different city score or a different region score. So you can see um, maybe let's say, DG is best uh, in, in, I don't know, uh, Malacca or Cellcom is best in Kuala Lumpur or, or so on. So you can actually drill down into these details on which operator is performing best and worst in which area, as well as in which category as well, okay? So later on, I will actually go on to the next part to show how to drill down into these uh, different network operators. Okay, so with that, we can see the ranking between uh, the different operators, how they perform in a particular country or in a particular region. Okay, so this is actually based on the Annex A of this uh, document that is set by ETSI. So all the details are actually in this document. Okay, and uh, I know uh, a lot of uh, uh, operators or, or people out there are still using the P3 standard which is uh, now actually uh, considered as an old standard uh, in this document and uh, is attached in Annex B instead. So because uh, this old standard uh, is used by P3 is actually um, based on parameters that is uh, uh, from 2G, 3G, uh, just a little bit on 4G. So there's not so much of video streaming uh, uh, parameters and so on, So, which is not uh, the case uh, in the current world because uh, a lot of people are using their handphones for video streaming, for, for data transfer, social media, for example. Okay, so these are more important in the in the current uh, area, and of course that is why uh, MPS is actually uh, uh, created to satisfy these uh, new so-called new areas of uh, uh, application test cases. Okay. Then of course, uh, MPS is uh, will, can be evolved as well uh, when newer 5G uh, test cases actually comes in. Okay, so those will be coming in soon when 5G actually uh, become more widely available in the commercial market. Okay, so so far what I have been talking about is on the on, uh, how to do benchmarking. Okay, to to uh, between different operators, okay, as you can see, benchmarking is on the uh, left arrow here. We need to say we go from level one, we see the different KPIs, combine them into different regions and combine them into overall a country-wide score, okay, to see how each uh, operator performs. At the same time, we can also use MPS to do network optimization, okay, to see what exactly where is uh, the problem uh, with the different operators, okay? In this case, we will go from the top to the bottom instead of from the bottom going to the top, okay? So what do I mean by that? 
Okay, so let me carry on. Okay, so on the left here, this is what we see from uh, aggregation of uh, different uh, KPIs to the whole region and to the uh, final countrywide score. Okay, this is what we have been talking for so far. Now on the right, this is what it, we, we mean by drilling down into each operator to see where is the problem with that operator. Okay, so for example, in this case, uh, after we get all the KPIs, we get an overall score of 745 for this particular operator, okay? So we now we look back downwards, okay? Because uh, I mean, for operators from the top level, they, they will not look at every single KPIs. They will look at the top level uh, uh, view, okay? So now we look at um, the top level view and then we look at, okay, so the, we didn't get the full score of 1,000 or we are not nowhere near the full score of 1,000 due to the fact that uh, the score is uh, not very good uh, in this uh, region where the road is defined, okay? So in the city, we are very good, okay? In the towns, we are still not too bad. Uh, rural areas are not too bad. But in the road areas, we are only getting 500 points out of 1,000, okay? So this is the area whereby there is a problem, okay? And what exactly is the problem? We can They can then drill down to each of the category, whether it's a telephony or data, Okay, if it is, they know that the data is the query score, then they can drill down exactly to which data is it? Is it streaming, uh, browsing, tr uh, data transfer, or social media? Okay, and then they can, know, let's say, if it is a live streaming, then they can further go down into the next, uh, the last layer, which is the KPIs. So they can then look at each individual KPIs to see what exactly gave them this poor score uh, in overall that, that uh, resulted in a, a not so a good score for the whole region for the world, okay? So in this case, they can actually drill down very easily to see exactly where they have the problem, okay? So in this case, okay, this is another example, okay? You can drill down and then you can realize that uh, the score actually come from the uh, cost setup time, okay? So after drilling down the region uh, and then drilling down to telephony, we saw that the telephony actually uh, is only getting about uh, 60 uh, out of 1,000 points, okay? And why is that so? Then you can drill down into KPIs. We saw that the cost setup time is more than uh, 10 seconds, okay? The, the I mean, the KPI is such that if there are more than 10 seconds, you get very, very little points because it is taking too long to set up a call, okay? So in this case, the call setup time is the major factor that contributed to the poor performance that uh, this operator is getting, okay? So they have to uh, do, do something to this. Um, maybe it's due to, uh, I don't know, the latency for, or maybe it's handovers between networks that uh, when they're doing the calls or, or some other parameters. So they can actually drill down in to that region and this particular instance to see how they can improve the network for these parts. Okay, so uh, as you can see, the MPS, the network performance score, it is uh, more than just uh, ranking the different networks. It is not, it is not just a benchmarking tool uh, to see. And uh, we can actually even go down into individual regions or categories to see how exactly the, uh, uh, the network performs, okay? And then of course, uh, we have to see how uh, how to uh, go into each of these KPIs and drill down into these different problematic areas according to the problems we see from the KPIs. Okay, so that is uh, how we, uh, as a good overview and example of how we, we can use um, this NPS to do benchmarking and uh, network optimization. So the last part here of uh, today's uh, uh, webinar or, or today's uh, talk is uh, on giving you a real life example from a certain city, okay, that uh, how, how it actually performs when we do all the drive tests in the city and plug it into our software, what we call smart analytics, okay. So uh, maybe just to introduce to you what exactly is uh, smart analytics here, okay, that I'm talking about. So smart analytics is actually a, a post-processing tool that is uh, uh, but from our company, Roda and Shorts, okay, that covers different use cases, including benchmarking, optimization, rollout, and monitoring, okay, by giving 
uh, by provide, uh, uploading certain um, so-called measurement files that is collected from uh, from different uh, measurement tools, okay? Be it for, by, from an RF scanner or from uh, some uh, UE tests uh, with uh, data throughput and, and streaming and so on, okay? So what are the highlights is that uh, we have this uh, integrated network performance scoring in, inside this smart analytics, okay? So uh, as I've uh, discussed already, what is network performance score, okay? So we have different views to look at this uh, MPS scoring. And then uh, it can be used as a drill down and optimization tool with uh, many different uh, uh, workspaces that can be user customized and so on. And the best thing is that it is a uh, web-based, meaning to say that it is um, actually, uh, you can actually launch it anywhere as long as you you have an internet connection. So like right now I can actually launch this uh, uh, Smart Analytics, although this Smart Analytics is in office, but I'm at home right now, okay? So uh, as long as you have a server to uh, install this, Smart Analytics, it can be uh, used by multiple parties across the uh, country. Okay, so, and then of course we have this uh, automatic uh, uh, coverage problem identification. So many to say we can set a certain threshold. Let's say uh, if the threshold is less than minus 110 dBm, for example, for RSRP, then we, we can actually immediately highlight st those areas that are less than that coverage level. So, um, so that the operators can know where are they lacking in those uh, areas, okay? Then of course, there is uh, the last thing, which is our unique selling point as well. It is the machine learning capabilities. Meaning to say, uh, we are using uh, a previous uh, automatic out of, uh, identification of the network uh, anomalies using a previous um, uh, data, okay? That is uh, collected over the past five years. Mean, okay, so meaning to say some sometimes if you see certain uh, uh, things that is going on, uh, but uh, you may not actually identify that it is a problem, okay? It may be close to a problem, but it, it's, uh, let's, say, let's say if you have a call drop event, okay, for example, but in certain cases, the calls may not drop, uh, although they are very close to call dropping, okay? Uh, sometimes you, you can hear that the, the voice, uh, for, from the other parties suddenly becomes uh, um, disappeared or, or it, it becomes uh, interfered with or with some noise in the background and so on. So those are the cases where but it's very close to being uh, getting a call drop, but uh, the network conditions allow it to continue but with a very poor uh, uh, call quality. So for those cases, using machine learning, we can actually identify those uh, because we have a, a pool of a very large amount of data that we train the machine on. Okay, so the machine can automatically identify those cases, which uh, if you do a simple normal drive test, you will not be able to identify those. Okay, because that is not a call drop and it is uh, still connected call. So, so those kind of situation, you need this uh, kind of a machine learning. Okay. So, uh, yeah, so as I mentioned, just the overview, smart analytics provide network benchmarking, optimization, troubleshooting, and helps in the network rollout, okay? So network performance score is actually used for benchmarking and optimization, as I mentioned earlier, okay? While we have this other module called the network problem analysis, whereby we can automatically identify problems in the network to uh, allow easier network troubleshooting, and then of course we have machine learning, which I have just mentioned as well, uh, which you can actually help to do network optimization and troubleshooting of those certain areas in the network. Okay, so uh, of course these are the manual workspaces which you can actually go down to drill down uh, using the traditional way of uh, uh, looking at the statistics, okay, the percentages, the pie charts, the graphs, and how to drill down into the layer three information uh, and so on, okay, to look at the problem uh, uh, deep down into where where the problem is okay so basically smart analytics is is the overall um post-processing tool to do all this uh, either by automatic means okay in these three boxes here or the manual way which is what uh, we've been doing uh, so far uh before this automation actually comes in okay so that is uh, just a quick overview of what is smart analytics okay so what i will be showing you now is um, a real life example okay 
in uh, London, okay, as you can see. So uh, because uh, we actually, uh, our, our headquarters actually did this uh, proof of concept in London, okay, uh, by, by asking the, the, uh, them to collect tons of data by driving all around London with our equipment. Okay, so you can see here that uh, with uh, five days of measurement, so uh, there are four operators in London. Okay, I mean in UK. Okay, of course in London. In this case, you can see that uh, uh, overall yellow operator has the best uh, score. Okay, which is uh, eight six two. Okay, the red operator only has about uh, seven nine eight, and then of course the poorest performing is this black operator, which is only getting 560 points out of 1,000 points, okay? So definitely we know immediately which is the best operators uh, in uh, in a general sense uh, in London. And then this map here, of course, shows us which is the best operator in the different areas in London because London is quite big, uh, you, uh, you know? Um, so you can see that even though black is actually the poorest performing in the whole of London, you can see that there is one, particular area whereby they are actually still the best operator. So meaning to say that they perform very good in this spot here, but the rest of the area, they are actually uh, quite poor in that case, okay? So, uh, but this is in general uh, quite aligned with uh, this chart here. You can see yellow is the best, whereby you see the most area being covered by yellow, okay? So, uh, so you can, we can then see that uh, we, uh, when the score is further split down into uh, data and voice score, you can see that uh, for voice score, generally they are all quite even, it's 300 over points, okay, which is uh, reasonable. Okay, But uh, data is the part whereby we can see the difference between the different operators. Okay, You can see that this particular black operator, the worst actually is due to the fact that they have only 246 data uh, points um, out of uh, 600 points. So this is the major contributor to why they are uh, being uh, getting such a poor overall score. Okay. So in other words, uh, subscribers using this their network for uh, network uh, for data transfers or for streaming and so on, it will be not getting as good a performance as the yellow and the red operators. Okay. And then, uh, yeah, so you can see here that uh, this is just to explain that uh, again, okay? So, um, yeah, let me just go on, okay? And then in real life, when we drill down further, okay, into uh, this is for the voice, okay? You can see that for voice, actually, uh, black is not too bad. And in fact, it is the second highest in call drop ratio, meaning you say they have the least drop cost, okay? Among, I mean, not the least, the yellow is still the least, but they're the second uh, second best in this case for drop cost. And the worst is actually the blue operator, okay? So uh, so you can see all these different uh, categories, the 10 percentile, volume smalls, and so on. And so you can see that uh, for black, although they have the least drop, cost rates, okay? But they are actually quite poor in their voice more. So you can see they have the poor, poorest voice quality, okay? So the cost doesn't drop, but uh, the quality is not so good. Sometimes you may hear interference here and there and so on, okay? So this is uh, just how we can allow uh, the operators to actually drill down into the respective problematic areas. So for black in voice, they need to check what is the problem with the MOS being so low, okay? And then you see even for 90th percentile, they have a zero points totally. So that is very bad for, for voice MOS, okay? And then for blue operator, they will need to check how to improve on the call drops. Why is there so much call drops for them, okay? So each operator will look at different KPIs in this case, okay? So, uh, you can see uh, even in the in the uh, so-called map itself, we can actually identify in the on the map where are the areas that they have the most drop cost. For example, in this case, blue has the most drop cost as we mentioned earlier. You can see here, blue has the most uh, drop cost because they have the least score. Okay, so in this case, you can see blue can actually. I mean, the blue operator can actually look at this map uh, from Smart Analytics and then go down to these particular areas and see why is it that they have so much call drops in these areas, okay? So 
it is actually quite an uh, efficient way because now immediately they know where exactly is the area and what is the problem they have with the voice uh, course. Okay, so same thing, this is for uh, uh, the voice quality, okay? So um, you can see that uh, the black, uh, as I mentioned, they lose in the speech quality because they have a poorer voice more score, okay? So uh, if we drill down further, we can actually see that there is uh, some missed call uh, ratio, so meaning to say that they have a problem with uh, audio interruptions, okay? so. Some of these voice uh, uh, calls, they are actually getting uh, noise from somewhere, resulting in this poor voice mod score. Okay, so when we drill down further in, okay, we realize that um, the black operator actually used a different speech codec compared to the other uh, operators. Okay, so and uh, the speech codec is actually uh, sometimes even down to only 6.6 .6 kilobits per second. Okay, so instead of uh, utilizing a high bit rate, as you can see from uh, these uh, three other operators, they are all utilizing mostly on 24 kilobits per second. Okay, but the black operators mostly is utilizing on if only 12 bits and sometimes dropping down to six bits. Okay, so this is uh, something we can actually highlight. So, so uh, the black operator may may decide whether they want to switch the speech codec or, or some other forms of rectification for, for this problem. Okay, so that's for the voice KPIs. And then we move on to the data KPIs. So using this same example in London, you can see that yellow is still the best, of course, and we know that black operator is uh, still the worst uh, for, for the down, download throughput, uh, and for even for 10% uh, tau, it is actually getting zero points, meaning we say that in the weakest 10% area, it is actually uh, not even getting any uh, good signal at all for, for good data, okay? So you can see uh, each of these categories are where they are lacking at and what is needs to be improved, okay? So even for the yellow operator, you can see that uh, although they are getting a full score for the average download throughput, but they are still not uh, up to standard in the poorest performing areas. Okay, so in the poorest performing ten percent areas, they are also getting quite a low score for this case. Okay, so uh, same for uplink. So you can see that they they need to actually improve on the poorest performing areas. Okay, so. You can see that the data throughput uh, in general, you are seeing yellow has much better, it's over 100 megabits per second compared to only 16 for uh, for, for this uh, black operator, which is like almost 10 times or, or eight times a difference in data speeds, okay? And you can see that yellow has actually, is almost the best in almost the whole of London in this case, okay? so. But does it really guarantee that yellow is best in real applications? Okay, well, this is a question that you need to think about because, um, as you know, that different applications may be uh, different works differently as well. Okay, so um, but in general, we can say that uh, yellow is having the best data uh, for the whole of London. Okay. Okay, so this is the uh, same for uh, HTTP browsing, what are the different points that is they're getting on each uh, operator, and you can see uh, the download durations that they're use, getting from each uh, different operator. Okay, so, uh, so same thing here, the different uh, drill down parameters, you can see the, how the IP service access duration, uh, the throughput and so on. Uh, so, uh, you can actually see that uh, although the, in this case the yellow actually download the page starts downloading it uh, slower than red, okay. So meaning to say, um, red operator starts downloading the uh, website only in the, uh, 80, after eighty two milliseconds, okay. But yellow takes one hundred and four milliseconds before they start the uh, uh, download, okay. But because yellow has a much uh, of higher, there's a very high uh, so-called download rates, okay? Therefore, it, it is actually giving us a 
relatively good uh, uh, so-called uh, download duration. Uh. Okay, so all this, as you can see from each KPI, uh, there is a lot more things behind them uh, to see how each KPI is actually performing. Okay, and with uh, the smart analytics, you can actually drill down to all these different uh, KPI uh, into the details. Okay, so I think that will be uh, the my final slide. Okay, to to have a summary of what I have uh, spoken so far. Okay, so you can see a um, network performance score. The NPS is a common standard for benchmarking of the different operators. Okay, it offers a holistic view to see how the network per perform. Okay, from end to end. So meaning all the way from from the data uh, KPIs, the individual drill down areas to uh, each uh, which are the rural regions, the best regions, and so on. Okay, so it is able to help operators to drill down to problem areas and to do troubleshooting for the uh, each of the KPIs they are lack in. Okay, then of course we have a smart analytics, which is the web-based uh, optimization and drill down post processing tool that we have. Okay, uh, we can actually use it for a uh, quick identification and drill down of uh, network problems, which like I've shown you in the example in London, okay, uh, in the previous few slides. Okay, and then of course, there are other customizable uh, workspace that allows uh, different users to see what they really need, okay, easily and quickly. So once you set this workspace, you can actually call them up every time when you want to and to see what you need to see. Okay, so uh, with that, uh, I think that will be the end of my presentation. Okay, so thank you very much. Uh, is there any questions? I can actually answer them. Yeah, we open to questions now. No, no questions. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I think we don't have any question here. Hmm. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, I mean, I mean, if you you guys do have any questions after this, um, you, anything you yeah. think of, please feel free to just uh, drop us an email. Okay, mm -hmm. you can contact uh Anwar. Uh, he will actually direct whatever questions to me after that. Yeah, yeah can pass to me also. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, with that, we would like to thank you, Mr. Lam, for the uh, knowledge share. Is very informative. Um, I'm sure all of us uh, have learned something, gained something today. And before we end, we also appreciate all participants to, to respond to our evaluation. And of course, uh, last but not least, uh, the participants today uh, are at Tower 1. You can come over to Level 3 and collect your prepack lunch before um, uh, 12 o'clock. Yeah? Only for uh, tower one participants okay with that thank you mr lam thank you all thank you always we'll meet again inshallah thank you okay thank you very much thank bye you bye. thank you